very few sports events can magnetize the attention of the nation as powerfully as the Grand National does. Certainly no other horse race comes close to the breadth of appeal of the world's most famous steeplechase. Major races on the flat are much richer in thoroughbred quality, but they give spectators and television audiences a less prolonged, less dramatically varied experience. The National, contested over more than four and a quarter miles and across 30 fences, can have the resonance of a saga. Modification of the fences and the increased willingness of riders to pull up tired and beaten partners have brought a welcome reduction of the dangers to life and limb, equine and human. But the capacity to thrill hasn't diminished. Even the soundtrack is unique. Mingling the hoofbeat thunder from racing's biggest fields with the swish and crackle of sunlit birch as obstacles that have household names are tackled. The national, set in Liverpool environs, unlikely to be confused with Ascot or Goodwood, lays fair claim to being the people's race, and it furnishes us with indelible memories. Who can forget the ultimate entry specialist, Red Rum? Winner of the race three times and runner-up twice. Or Bob Champion's emotional triumph in all the meeting in 1981, so soon after Champion had recovered from cancer. Or British jump racing supreme jockey, A.P. McCoy. First go round, Dunk Rocket won the national. Gaining victory at the 15th attempt. History stretching back to 1839 hasn't wearied the Grand National. And today's safest bet to be a non faller is its popularity. The words from Hugh McElvenny. <coughs> the move.